If you haven't seen this fourth season, then I highly recommend you watch it before you watch this, if you choose to watch my review anyway. I hope that you enjoy this and it makes you want to watch this show in the future, which is all I can hope for. Just send money to Sam Esmail's PayPal account. One character I haven't really talked about up to this point is Agent Dom DePiro who doesn't really play a major role in the plot until later in the season. First half of the season, she's just kinda laying around. Dom has a very empty life aside from her work at the FBI, and that's by design. The closest thing she has to dating, those online sex chat rooms. At the end of the third season, she was forced by Irving to become a spy for the Dark Army. She now has to lie to the FBI for them. Another Dark Army operative named Janice is established to watch over Dom, and her family. I'm gonna be forced to do something very bad to your mother. Janice plays a similar role to Irving in the third season, an unsuspecting, mild-mannered pedestrian that's actually really psychotic. You can handle that, right? If you don't feel 100% like last time, you should let me know right now so I can set aside the time to kill your mother and your entire family. No. Episode 6 is when Dom finally comes back into Darlene's and Elliot's storyline. Dom hesitates to kill Darlene. Janice comes in to finish the job, but Darlene wipes her phone. My instructions were to find your brother. Well, in that case, my phone's not gonna do you any good, I just wiped it. This leads us to episode 8. They're just trying to find out where it's So they're dead. Anyway, now that Dom took out the Dark Army, the other D runs away to go find her brother. Now we can get back to Elliot. This episode starts with a young Elliot hiding away a key. Not 100% on the key. I think you dropped this. There are many keys in the show. It doesn't fit. Krista tries to bring him in a police station, but he ends up saying goodbye and follows a younger version of himself. I really like the start of this episode, especially the music. It opens with Mr. Robot, Elliot's mother, and Elliot's younger self all conversing in a boardroom from the pilot. This is really taking place somewhere in Elliot's psyche. All of these different personalities trying to figure out how to drop this massive plot twist on him. Mr. Robot thinks letting Elliot carry out his plan is the best way to get Elliot to give up control. Once the hack is done, maybe then I can get through to him. This chapter chronicles the fall of White Rose and the fall of the Deus Group. They leak all their information to the public, including where they're hosting this party. No more playing God without permission. We took them down. They also steal all of the group's money and redistribute it amongst everyone. We're all broke. It's a pretty satisfying episode, and it's really well done. While it's not entirely silent, like that other episode, there are long stretches of time with just action and no dialogue. What spices the episode up are the scenes of Minister Zhang flipping out. You think that I can't survive being doxxed? And Philip Price is just enjoying it. Ooh. Things are looking on the up. I do like that they get to see each other this one last time though. BD Wong was great, he really sold it. It is a nice episode. We get to see Irving finally finish his book, and he's signing copies at an airport bookstore. I'm gonna sign you a copy. <laughs> he's sure to tell Dom that the Dark Army doesn't care about them anymore. What around camp is, they don't care about you two no more. In all likelihood, White Rose just called them off. Now there's a little love crisis, cause Darlene just thinks they should go to Budapest anyway, just for the fun of it. Dom was only going cause the Dark Army was gonna kill her. Talking about giving yourself a break. Huh? Uh, uh, what? I wanna get back to the cool stuff. Back to the killing, back to the action. Elliot goes to the Washington Township nuclear power plant. He hacks into it and deactivates it then meets up with White Rose in her room. White Rose has apparently already activated this machine. They have a long argument. White Rose says that the world is cruel, that we deserve better, and so she has created a machine that takes us into a better world. This world around us, I'm tired of it. All I ever wanted was to finally bring an end to that dysfunction and deliver us a better world. Elliot says that's just the way people are. And we hurt each other and it gets messy, but that's just us in any world you're in. And then she shoots herself. So now Elliot has to play this computer game to find out what the hell to do. 
His best bet is to just stay where he is. It fades to red, and we are then transported into an alternate world, where Elliot is like a normal guy. He works at All Safe, and he's hanging out with all the old guys from season one. We're taking a swing at F Corp today, B Mock. White Rose is giving a TED talk on the TV. Tyrell is more of like a Silicon Valley type tech. I also feel the same about my life at F Corp. Oh, yeah, and now it's called F Corp. F Corp. Angela is still alive, and he's supposed to marry her the following day. This version of Elliot returns to his apartment to find the Elliot we've been following throughout the show sitting at his computer. The finale is two episodes that were aired on the same night. Watching them together is like a feature film, which is why it reminded me of Back to the Future. What's Back to the Future? Hard to explain. It's about going into the future to change the past and coming back into an alternate present day. Today is the day that Marty travels into the future. I've wanted to see this movie on this day since I was your age. Washington Township seems to be influenced by Hill Valley from Back to the Future. Just look at the clock tower. Do you mind holding my flux capacitor for a second? He visits his dad's store, Mr. Robot, which is still around. He talks to his mom and he finds out that in this world, he hasn't been abused as a child at all. He even goes to visit Angela's apartment and Philip Price is there along with Angela's mom. But everything starts to fall apart, literally, when Elliot finds out there's another version of him out there. Elliot hacks into Elliot's computer, which is of course a MacBook. Elliot hacking himself. There he finds sketches of F Society. This brings us back to the end of the last episode when they meet up. There's another earthquake, and the Elliot we were just introduced to falls over and breaks his head open. Elliot gets a call from Angela. You wanna start this new life with me or what? More than anything. This leads us into episode 13, the final episode of the show. Elliot hides Elliot's body in a cardboard box labeled self-storage. Officer Dom DePiro comes in, and she's like, what's going on here? He's like, uh, don't worry about that blood over there. Uh, she chases Elliot into the subway. He gets to Coney Island from there, which is where his wedding is. In attendance are a bunch of people in F Society masks. And Mr. Robot is there to give him an exposition dump. The real Elliot. What the fuck are you talking about? But as it turns out, there are five personalities. We have Elliot's mother, Elliot's younger self, and who turns out to be the real Elliot. The world Elliot has found himself in for these past few episodes is a fever dream created by him to entrap the real Elliot. Recursive loop that you constructed about a year ago to keep him occupied so you could take control of him. It's an endless loop of the perfect life Elliot always wanted. He has Angela, he's happy, his parents are good people. We had also slipped into this world in the episode Damon. There's even a scene from that episode that is reincorporated into the finale. Some dialogue is added, and a line that was originally cut off is now showed in full. You are not Elliot. You are the mastermind. A lot of this is told to Elliot through Krista. Elliot basically rejects it and wakes up in the real world. He's in a hospital. As it turns out, he survived, and Darlene is there to visit him. I think this final scene between them is really great, and wraps the show together perfectly. He doesn't have everything. Elliot said what kept him going is the love of other people. Because they feel something for me that I can't. They love me. And the last scene, she says she wants to see her real brother again. I really miss him. He's finally discovered who he is, and so Elliot lets this part of himself die, and then Darlene greets us before we cut to credits. He knows all the all these intimate details about everybody around him, but he doesn't know them, and that's the trap that I think technology kind of lures us into. And our relationship with technology, and, and all that encompasses, and I and I think you know with the brilliant actors that I have, the the way they portray a lot of these characters really connect with a lot of people out there. These two episodes were sort of a test. Elliot got to live out his perfect existence. He's cut off from the truth about his past. He's spared a horrible memory. Only when he's in this world, though. 
Mr. Robot also says that Elliot slipped into this place when he was going through his morphine withdrawal. So if it's possible that this Elliot can slip into the fictional reality, then maybe the real Elliot made his way into the real world at certain points. Neither of them can account for when Darlene told them Farrah was in town. Freaked me the fuck out when you showed up at your building a couple months ago, but when I told you, you just blew it off like it was no big deal. I am not the one Darlene talked to. Say he hasn't woken up. That's not true. Darlene, she said they talked two months ago. In season two, there's a scene that takes place on Halloween before the show starts. You there? We open with a scene between Darlene and Elliot. It's a flashback yeah. in their apartment. We really like it. I don't know. Like, Carly's amazing. Rami's amazing. This, there's something interesting about what's happening in the scene. There's something underneath that's going on that you, you don't quite know. There's a lot of subtext to that scene. Now, upon watching the show again, things have a new meaning. One of the things that was made clearer to me is the significance of the Red Wheelbarrow, which is a poem and a barbecue restaurant in the show. At the end of season one, Elliot has no memory of this meeting with Tyrell. What do you remember? Wait. I don't even trust you. In the episode Python Part 2, Tyrell and Elliot have this conversation in the car. You're dead wrong about that, my friend. I don't think there's anything we could possibly agree on. Which is exactly the same as this scene in Season 1. I don't think there's anything we could possibly agree on. There's this extra bit in Python Part 2. There's something between us. I can see it. You're only seeing what's in front of you. You're not seeing what's above you. He wants to understand Elliot, except this isn't Elliot. So much depends upon a red wheelbarrow glazed with rainwater beside the white chickens. The Red Wheelbarrow poem itself is pretty straightforward. What's important about the poem is that it meant a lot to Tyrell's father. My father used to say that to me all the time as a child. It meant very much to him. This is actually Mr. Robot he's talking to, who knows about Elliot's horrible dad. I use it as a reminder. A reminder of him. And a reminder of what I never want to become. The show starts in the room Elliot perceives as the meeting room for his different personalities. Figures. You're only born a month ago. I could tell there was a purpose to the show starting at the point it did. Something is going on with you, Elliot. You have not been the same the past couple of months, and this happened before Shayla. There's so many clues hidden throughout the show that going back and watching the entire thing again is like a whole new experience. The story all comes together so well. It's a unique thing for a television series to have a story this thoroughly planned out. I hope to see more shows in the future that are entirely written by one person or directed by one person. It's a really unique experience. Matt Quayle's score for this show is excellent. The music especially really comes to the forefront in that fifth episode that's silent and the seventh episode, which goes for a Hitchcockian orchestral score. The series has a lot of good characters, and most of them aren't pure good or pure evil. Look around you! All signs lead to the same hopeless destination! White Rose, the closest thing we have to a clear-cut villain, was an ally of Elliot's at the start. And same thing with Philip Price, same thing with Mr. Robot, same thing with the main character himself. I didn't know how to talk to him. I couldn't deal with what he was going through, so I gave up and took off. It's a totally different take on the protagonist of a TV show, and there could be a whole meta level to the other Elliot creating art of the hacker version of Elliot. The creator of the show relates a lot to this character from what it seems. It's art imitating life. That personal connection is part of why I like the show, I think. So many TV shows are disposable, but it's also been a medium that has pushed boundaries in recent years. And this TV show is one of those. There will hopefully be more shows like it. The show has evolved into something totally different than it used to be. You're either going to be okay with that or you're not. It manages to keep its own creative voice while paying homage to a ton of other things. I like the references to other books and movies and TV shows. 
cleverly interweaving all these different pop culture icons into one original narrative. One of the biggest inspirations for the tone of this show, the narrative structure, and the kind of anti-hero protagonist, The Sopranos, which I can't go one fucking video without mentioning. The thing with Elliot is he can actually be helped by therapy, and his case is way more severe. Many people told me about this show Utopia, which I'm definitely going to check out, and from what I hear it influenced Mr. Robot. But I'll have to see, that looks good. Hello viewer, we have hacked this video. We have forced Ralph the Movie Maker to give criticisms of his favorite show. I have a few criticisms with this season. That doesn't mean it's the 8th season of Game of Thrones. My criticisms of the show do not outweigh the positives, which there are many. Originally it was supposed to be 5 seasons. Sam Esmail said 5 seasons. They shortened it to 4. I do wish there had been another season, like they originally planned. There are parts of this season that felt a bit rushed, and I wish there was more time to elaborate on these things, or to give Elliot more time to cope with that trauma. Like, they had to give Dom something to do this episode, so she dreams that a girl comes over, and she's part of the Dark Army. Like, even in Dom's dreams, the Dark Army is, like, haunting her. I was just wanting other things to happen. She was kind of separate. She didn't do much to actually help Elliot and Darlene. I didn't need the scene of her making grilled cheese. Like, I get the sound design, like, cool. In the first part of this review, I said this. Just like not how every person with dissociative identity disorder has some kind of deep, buried, traumatic experience. Everyone with dissociative identity disorder has some kind of deep, buried, traumatic experience. And the amount of research they did to get stuff like this correct, and make sure it's accurate, is the very reason Mr. Robot is such a good show. But if you look at it from a story at a dramatic standpoint, it makes sense. Adding something for shock value can be seen as a writing cliche. This show does it more tastefully. When I look back at my original Mr. Robot video, my fanboyism is very cute. There's a part at the end where I try to sum up what the show is about. What the hell is the point of the show? So what is this show about? Technology, that's what it's about. We're boy! Weapons offline! Shields are down! And we lost this network! Damn! I know! I really wanted to see- Dude, you are not gonna believe this. This house is wiped out. It came from wherever that signal came from. I think he's dead. Did you push anything? No. You were a character that I created for 